Welcome to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Uh, I am Luigi Fontana, professor and scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic of the University of Sydney. Today we're going to discuss about a new study presented at the 2024 American Heart Association scientific meeting uh, in Chicago, a study that raised new concerns about the popular 16-8 fasting diet, also known as time-restricted eating or time-restricted feeding. This fed diet, as it is, and I'm going to tell you in a second, has gained traction for its uh, supposed uh, weight loss and uh, longevity benefits, uh, despite limited concrete evidence to support the health benefits, the health claims. Now, this new epidemiological study analyzed data from over 20,000 US adults from the Enhanced uh, Survey and found that those who limited their eating to less than eight hours window per day, so they were eating their food in less than eight hours, had a 91% higher risk of dying from cardiovascular disease compared to those eating over a 12 to 16 hour window. Yes, you heard well. Basically, those who ate their food within this eight-hour window had a 91% higher risk of dying of cardiovascular disease mortality compared to those eating uh, their food within 12 to 16 hours. In this study, participants were followed for an average of eight years up to a maximum of 17 years, okay? So this is not like a randomized clinical trial studying the effects of time restricted feeding for three months or six months. You know, this is a long-term, the long-term effects of uh, uh, time-restricted eating the 16A diet. Of course, these are epidemiological data, so as I always said in my videos, this is just association, doesn't prove a cause-effect relationship yet. We cannot disregard this data as nonsense. And I'm going to tell you why later I think, you know, these results are likely uh, showing, uh, they are showing a likely increase in, uh, in, uh, in uh, mortality. Uh, the important um, discovery is that the risk was elevated not only in the general population, but even more in those individuals with pre-existing heart disease. Among those with cardiovascular disease, those who limited their eating to less than an eight-hour window per day had a two-fold higher risk. So in the general population was a 91% higher risk. In those with pre-existing heart disease, the risk was two-fold higher of cardiovascular mortality, again, compared to those eating their food between 12 and 6, hour, 12 and six hours window. Interestingly, even those eating in a window of eight or between 8 and 10, no, so not, not less than 8, but between 8 and 10, had a 66% higher risk of death from heart disease or stroke compared to those eating over a 12-16 hour window. In patients with cancer, the situation is even worse with a threefold, a threefold increase in cardiovascular mortality in those who limited their eating to less than an eight-hour window per day. And as I said, they had a pre-existing diagnosis of cancer. In contrast, those that ate their food uh, exceeding 16 hours was associated with a 53% reduced cancer mortality in cancer patients. So again, the opposite of what we expected those who had pre-existing cancer and they ate their food within eight hours 
had a threefold increase. Those who ate their food for in in an in interval of more than 16 hours had a 53 percent reduced cancer mortality. Okay, is that these are association data. But this new study adds to the growing evidence that fasting by itself, fasting by itself, could have negative health implication. Again, echoing findings from previous research that I've discussed in a, uh, in a video that you can find here that had a lot of controversial uh, messages of people saying, oh my gosh, what are you saying? And But, you know, these are data. And so we cannot disregard even those epidemiological data. Uh, I think, you know, the issue lies in people seeking quick solutions to complicated health issues, uh, complicated, uh, you know, health uh, biology. <laughs> I think, and I wrote that in my books and I said, you know, in my articles, scientific articles, that Many uh, view diets like the 5-2 or the 16-8 fasting regimens as magical fixes for weight and health problems. The misconception is that one can continue with their unhealthy diet, lack of exercise, uh, drinking, over-drinking, smoking, eating their refined processed food, lots of animal products, but in their mind, or at least that's what has been sold, if they eat their junk food within an eight-hour window because of circadian rhythm problems, then, you know, that's going to solve the problem of obesity, insulin resistance, inflammation, mortality, and it is, is going to even boost longevity. So all these marketing strategy didn't have any data any data whatsoever to support those claims. And this epidemiological study and a previous one instead of strongly suggest that, you know, time-restricted eating, eating everything within a window of 8 or even 8 and 10 hours, less than 10 hours, or skipping meals is increasing mortality, not reducing mortality and promoting longevity. However, as I said, these studies, an epidemiological study, uh, and, and, uh, and this study highlights that practices, you know, fasting by itself uh, when combined with unhealthy eating or uh, lack of exercise, smoking, drinking, uh, is increasing the risk of cardiovascular mortality. And therefore, there is no easy fix to complex problems. The same is true for, uh, you, 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 mark my words, you know, you're going to see, you know, these Ozempic, all these uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists, uh, where people, they're going to still eating their junk, but less without exercise. So they're going to be sarcopenia. Maybe they're going to continue over drinking and uh, alcohol and maybe smoking. It's not going to fix problems, but it's going to make problems substantially worse in terms of general health. Uh, in summary, while uh, time-restricted eating may provide short-term, short-term weight loss benefits. There are potential long-term health risks, especially concerning cardiovascular health. Thank you for listening. As always, uh, this is Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL, uh, the channel, the YouTube channel on health and longevity. I'm Professor Luigi Fontana, the Leonard P. Ullman Chair in Translational Metabolic Health and the Scientific Director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and Health for Life Program of the University of Sydney and a clinical academic in the Department of Endocrinology in, at the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital 
in uh, Sydney.